Hi, good afternoon. I'm Dan Neifen, reporter with Lancaster Newspapers, and with me is Eric Hurst, and we're going to talk about some severe weather coming uh, tomorrow. Eric, the National Weather Service and AccuWeather are warning of some pretty serious storms in the area, potentially even tornadoes. What's your forecast? Yeah, well, Dan, it's a really good setup. Uh, today, uh, the, the threat region is the Midwest uh, and the Ohio Valley. Uh, tomorrow, the threat region is southern Pennsylvania down through the Mid-Atlantic. And uh, there's a very strong low pressure center with excellent jet stream dynamics. Uh, it's really a classic setup for severe weather in the Mid-Atlantic region. And, you know, tornadoes, you, you can never rule them out in a setup like this. Uh, Tornadic thunderstorms are quite rare in this part of the country. Pennsylvania uh, averages only about 15 tornadoes per year. Um, but when we do see tornadoes, it's in a setup like this. So that's why meteorologists are talking this event up uh, as, uh, you know, um, certainly a severe weather threat, uh, straight line winds and hail, and potentially a few brief isolated tornadoes. Uh, here's a question from one of our guests. What are the odds that all of the lower Susquehanna will be in the moderate category? And I guess moderate means uh, right. Uh, Mo well, yeah, the, yeah, well, the, the uh, Severe Storm Prediction Center has the lower Susquehanna Valley in a moderate risk of severe. That's their forecast for tomorrow. That's a, a, a middle classification that's pretty rare in these parts. Now, I do not expect that that will be extended up into the upper Susquehanna Valley. Uh, there's quite a bit of cold air to our north, and, and therefore I think on Thursday, uh, places in northern Pennsylvania will actually see a chilly rain with temperatures in the 60s. Really, the, the main threat in Pennsylvania is from the turnpike southward. Yeah, I could see a few storms that make it north of the turnpike, but in terms of uh, the worst of the winds and, and the tornado threat, it's the turnpike southward and especially as you get south of the Mason-Dixon line. Okay, so we're, we're definitely south of the turnpike, so we can expect it. Um, how much rain can we expect with this? Right. Well, much like Monday's event, you know, two days ago we were in a tornado watch, and although nothing happened in Pennsylvania tornado-wise, there were some heavy thunderstorms that uh, produced heavy downpours. And across the county last Monday, uh, we had one to three inches. Uh, the heaviest rains fell in the eastern areas. Uh, the same type of thing is possible uh, later tonight into Thursday with a total rainfall of one to three inches. There could be some spots that get much less than that. Of course, if you're missed by a thunderstorm, you, you might not see much at all. But I think most places see at least one round of showers or thunderstorms. Uh, and, and with the very moist air working in, there's a lot of fuel there. You know, there's a lot of potential that in an hour or two, you can get those gutter gushing downpours and that can cause a small stream flooding uh, kind of the urban flooding. Uh, we're not talking the Susquehanna flooding. That is highly unlikely. But, you know, those creeks and streams that come up quick and then go down quick, that that's what there's a possibility for tomorrow. Okay. Uh, what, speaking of rain, where, where do we stand in terms of rainfall this season? Are we above or below normal? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, interestingly, as we, as we started the month of June, we were actually about two inches behind on rainfall year to date. But we've made that up with the rainfall we had uh, last Friday with the remnants of uh, Tropical Storm Andrea coming up. Uh, we got an inch or two in, in, in places with that. And then Monday's rain on top of that. So we're actually uh, even to uh, maybe a half an inch uh, above normal. Um, you know, we're right where we should be. Okay. Uh, the, the ground is a little damp, uh, obviously, with the recent rain, but it's certainly not saturated. Uh, and the ground can hold a lot more water. So to, to get real widespread flooding, we would need three, four inches of rain. And that's probably unlikely. Okay. That's why we're talking about more the localized flooding with uh, you know, thunderstorms that hit one neighborhood but miss, miss another. Okay. Um, where are the storms right now and what kind of damage are they doing? Yeah, well, today, again, it's the Midwest. Uh, in fact, a as of the time we're talking here, just after noontime, nothing is happening out there yet. But things are going to start breaking out in the next few hours. I would expect some, uh, some storm watches, uh, uh, thunderstorm tornado watches to be issued this afternoon into uh, the first half of tonight. Uh, so Illinois, Indiana, Ohio under the gun this afternoon. Late tonight, the debris from those storms will, will probably make it into Pennsylvania. So I can't rule out a few showers, maybe even a rumble of thunder here in Lancaster late tonight. But that would be with the dying storms coming from the west. Tomorrow's outbreak is will uh, start anew around midday tomorrow. Those storms will break out during the midday hours over the mountains and then move east of the mountains 
into the megalopolis, you know, Philadelphia, Baltimore, Washington, uh, during the late afternoon. Okay, so us as well expect it late yeah, afternoon, right. into the late frame, afternoon. Uh, again, shower, thunderstorm, certainly a possibility anytime tonight, but the, se the severe threat tomorrow <clears throat> is more um, 2 p.m. till 10 p.m., something okay. like that. So this will be around for a while. Yeah, uh, again, people are going to want to have a heads up all day tomorrow, but I would expect it's early afternoon tomorrow that some type of a watch, either a thunderstorm watch or a tornado watch, will be issued from the turnpike southward. Again, if the storm tracks a little differently, maybe some of these details can shift, but um, mm -hmm. this is, a, 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 like I said earlier, a good setup for uh, thunderstorms in the Lancaster area, and uh, certainly uh, some straight-line wind damage, hail, and an isolated tornado can't be ruled out. Okay. Um, well, we'll sort of more on that. If we do get these 60 mile an hour sustained winds uh, and the ground somewhat wet, what kind of damage could we see with this storm? Yeah, well, you know, if you get uh, gusty straight line winds, you know, 60, 80 miles an hour can cause tornado like damage. They can tear shingles off uh, the roof of your house and, and bring down. Um, old, some old trees or some limbs. Uh, we saw something like that the end of June last year when there was a big uh, derecho event uh, that, that tracked from the Midwest to the Mid-Atlantic and caused a lot of straight line wind damage. Um, and I think there'll be some of that tomorrow. There's been talk of uh, this uh, today and tomorrow being a derecho event. Uh, derecho is a, 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 a thunderstorm that's prolific in terms of producing straight line winds uh, that uh, can be quite damaging, as they were last year, uh, say, down to our south in Washington, D.C., where four million people lost power uh, within a derecho event. Uh, to me, this setup for tomorrow does look more, a little more like a tornado-type setup than a derecho setup, but, but still, I, I think there'll be uh, some, of, some of each. I think we'll, we'll hear reports of straight-line wind damage around the mid-Atlantic region, possibly in Lancaster, and I think we'll see um, a handful of tornadoes tomorrow in the Mid-Atlantic region. Again, perhaps one could be in Lancaster, but but maybe not. You okay. know, it's wait and see. Uh, somebody is asking, Matt is asking, what are the chances this fails to come together for the Lancaster area? Hey, that's always a possibility. There are there are, there are some things that can spoil severe weather. For instance, if tomorrow we get little or nothing in the way of sunshine, that really puts a damper on storm development because it's the daytime heating that adds uh, fuel to the fire, you might say. Uh, so areas south of the Mason-Dixon line are likely to begin sunny tomorrow, whereas up here in Pennsylvania, we may see a fair amount of clouds. And if those clouds are slow to break, that would suppress storm development, at least severe storm development. And kind of like on Monday, things just uh, never got all that strong here uh, this far north. Uh, this past Monday, I had to go down to Maryland and Virginia to see the stronger storms. So uh, again, um, we're talking about a moderate risk of severe weather. Um, so it's a day that we certainly need to be aware and not ignore the threat. But then again, it's not a lock. It never is. You know, tornadoes especially are rare um, in this part of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, can you just kind of go over for me a, a little bit more what these derechos are? Right. Well, they're thunderstorms that are pro prolific wind producers uh, where there are not necessarily tornadoes but instead downbursts of air out of the storms that uh, produce tornado-like damage. Uh, there's, you know, the, they're, um, they're, they're being talked a lot about here this week because last year at this time there was the big derecho event that hit to our south in okay. the Baltimore, Washington area. So a lot of people are reminiscing on that event, wondering, is that what tomorrow will bring us? And that's possible. I don't think it would be as extreme a derecho event as last year. Um, I'm more concerned about isolated tornadoes tomorrow because of the amount of shear in the atmosphere, uh, a very strong low pressure center. You know, all all the ingredients are there. I'll be shocked if there's not a few tornadoes somewhere in the Mid Atlantic region. Again, whether one makes uh, down to the ground here in Lancaster, that's that's hard to say. Okay, and when when will uh all this be moving out, what can we expect after this storm, maybe going into the weekend weather-wise? Right. Well, the main disturbance is out of here tomorrow night. So whatever shower and thunderstorm activity is around tomorrow evening will will wind down around midnight uh, Thursday night. Friday's kind of a transition day. There'll be a gusty wind out of the north. That's going to begin to filter in cooler, drier air. 
There could still be a pop-up shower on Friday. I don't expect a rainy day, but there could be a leftover shower around. Uh, but much cooler conditions, only in the low 70s on Friday. And Saturday looks beautiful. High pressure taking control. It should be a mostly sunny day. Maybe not a great day for the swimming pool because there'll still be a chilly breeze around. Uh, but with strong sunshine, it'll still be in the mid to upper 70s, a, a very comfortable day for outdoor activities. And Father's Day? Yes, yeah, Sunday I see clouds in the increase. Not a bad day, uh, but sunshine giving way to clouds, perhaps a, a shower late in the day, um, but more likely those showers will arrive next Monday. Okay, uh, any last minute advice for preparation uh, that anybody should do for this yeah, well, storm? Yeah, I think tomorrow is one of those days you want to keep, you know, kind of have a heads up. You know, uh, have your phone, have the radar on your phone or your storm alerts or be near a computer or television or, or visit your website and, uh, you know, see what is happening, especially during the midday and afternoon hours because that's when the storms will begin to break out and any watches or warnings w would be issued. Okay, well, Eric, thank you very much. We're going to wrap it up here. You're welcome.